them. If you catch these people, keep them in jail. Like, don't give them no low bond because all they're going to do is do it again. That Uber driver says she's lucky. <laughs> oh, shit, man. He cooning. Uh-oh. Um, Uh-oh. Them. If you catch these people, keep them in jail. Like, don't give them no low bond because all they're going to do is do it again. That Uber driver says she's lucky to be alive tonight after she says two riders carjacked her at gunpoint. Police are looking for the young people and the Uber driver's car. Let's go to Fox 13's Daniel Wilkerson live. Daniel, that Uber driver told you she's also an educator with MSCS and this incident, that's an educator, driver's man. car. No low bond because all they're going to do is do it again. Educator. MSCS and this incident has really put her in a bad position. I tell you, your heart just goes out to her. DG, good evening to you. Good evening to you at home. Like a lot of people, she uses Uber to subsidize her income, but she says without a vehicle, she can't get to either job. LaShondra Cox is a hard worker. My main job, I'm an educator for Memphis Shelby County Schools. Okay. And so to make ends meet, she took on a second job. I did Uber to make extra money as an educator because, you know, I don't make a lot of money. Sunday, just after 2 a.m., Cox says she went to Park Chester and Ashwood in Parkway Village. I picked up a Uber request um, for a gentleman named John. There, she says she picked up a gentleman. Never, never stops with the gentleman shit, man. I picked up. You know, there's nobody called that 81 year old white guy gentleman. Up a Uber request um, for a gentleman named John. There, she says she picked up a young man and woman. The young man was quiet the entire ride, but the young girl was on the phone with somebody. She says the woman was on the phone with someone who was looking to buy a car. Strangely, she says the woman then asked her how she liked her vehicle and whether it came with a tracking device. I told her Apple AirTag, uh, even though I really didn't have tracking on it. Cox thought that to be a strange question, and as they were coming to their destination here near Boeing Shower and Danbury in Whitehaven, things would turn even more strange. He opened his door and leaned up and brandished a gun at me. She says she tried to grab her phone and keys, but the man told her to leave them. I was like, okay, just please don't shoot me. Like, just let me go. Cox was able to get out of the car. And I started knocking on the first door, but they wouldn't, you know, come to the door. She tried two more doors with no luck, but then saw a man. But it was actually the neighbor across the street coming home via Uber himself. Um, and I was able to get up and run to him and flag him down. And he was, he was such a sweet person to stop and help me and assist me and call the police for me. Uber said in a statement to Fox 13 News, what this driver endured is absolutely terrifying. We're relieved she made it to safety and have spoken with her. The rider account was banned as soon as this was reported to us, and we are supporting law enforcement in their investigation. Meanwhile, happy to be alive, Cox has this message for the district attorney and the courts. Keep them. If you catch these people, keep them in jail. Like, don't give them no low bond because all they're going to do is do it again. Like, Yo, Uber <laughs> it takes. Fuck. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> but isn't this is what it takes for black people to, you know, and a lot of white liberals too. They have to personally be victims of crime, they can't empathize with other victims, you know. Man, they're gonna be right back out on the streets, man. They're gonna be right back out on the streets doing it again. So, Auk, yeah. what do you think the uh, black woman percentage voting for Republican will be? One to two. One, yeah, one or two. Yeah, one or two. Because this, they're gonna. They're, they're usually ninety-seven, but this year they're gonna. They're gonna get in the overdrive. Like ninety-eight. Yeah, yeah. They gotta hold the yeah. Democratic. Uh, party down this year, man. Like last time, do it for Kamala. What, what yeah. about Sun Man? How are they going to fall on this one? A uh, nine, 87, 87 okay. percent. Um, I think they, they voted like 80 percent last time. That was like 85. It was like 85 last time. Oh, I, right. think, I think, mm -hmm. I think more black men will vote for um, because you have to also think about it like. When we think, when we see all this stuff on 
Twitter and and on on YouTube, of black men turning the page. These are small groups of black men. I never meet anyone in real life that knows who any of these manosphere guys are. I never meet anybody in real life who knows who who, who talks like any of these black conservatives talk. Yes, yeah, very, very. But you, small. but Ark, you you up in DC though, man. That's like uh, that's all liberals. I'm in Pennsylvania, man. <laughs> oh my bad. I thought you. Yeah, were in DC. man. I'm in Pennsylvania, man. But I I, I live in, I I be in I'm in DC a lot, man. But yeah, yeah, man. Um, a lot of I, a lot of black men that talk that shit online, they still vote Democrat. Exactly. They just angry about at the moment. You know what I'm saying? They mad and so their, their baby mama took them for child support or some shit. And they mad and shit. Well, they once they once they come to their senses, they vote them. No, they need to have some accountability. Back out live, as I said, your heart just goes out for her. Here she is, a MSCS educator. She's trying to do Uber to subsidize her income. She says money has been so tight lately that she let her insurance lapse, and so she's stuck without a vehicle. If Memphis police don't find it, she'll just be out of a vehicle. She yeah, has yeah. set up a GoFundMe page. Just go to our website, fox13memphis.com, to find out a way you can help her. You guys are strapped? Yeah. How old are you? I'm 13. This is Memphis, the most violent city in America. This graph shows the violent crime trend in Memphis dating back nearly 40 years. The last few years have been the most violent in the city's history. Are you on any drugs today? <laughs> Yeah. I got shot. Why am I? Oh, I got shot. Side, back. I didn't expect that. Oh, somebody to be able to get shot. Everybody got shot in front of me. That's funny. Funny? You could just walk over to the store, come out, you get hit, you did. While violent crime in America decreased 6%, Memphis's violent crimes rose 7%, robberies rose 20%. Rapes rose 41% and murders rose 34%, breaking Memphis's own homicide record again. That's Haiti right there. What they just <laughs> described is Haiti. Dude, this is like an SNL skit. It's like not even real life. Like, yo, yo, and he <laughs> rape went up the most out of everything. Yeah, man. Black women are the most unprotected, man, because of white supremacy, man. Salute the product of Cook County. Yeah. Said just checked into the stream. What did you think of the video? I, I'm just, I'm just, we just starting it, man. This is violent <sighs> crimes rose seven percent, robberies rose twenty percent, rapes rose forty one percent, and murders rose thirty four percent, breaking Memphis's own homicide record again. But why is Memphis becoming more violent despite violence in America trending down? And what can be done to fix it? First Barely trending down. Barely. Look at them, man. They they really think that white supremacy, like and like just just to piggyback on what you just said a few minutes ago. Eve, these women who live in Memphis, they really think that white supremacy is the biggest problem in their life, without a doubt, without yeah. a doubt. It is there's, there's there's just it's just no fixing that. Like you can't. There's no way to fix that, man. And I feel sorry for white people that are trying to fix that, man. Because I mean, I know you guys are problem solvers, and you guys, you know, what I'm saying, you guys created written language and created all this other stuff and societies and constitutions. And you think you can fix everything, man. I promise you, man, you can't fix that. First, I want to see if everyday people in Memphis feel safe on a day-to-day -day basis. Does it go down at night here? Daytime, too. Daytime, too? This city is safer and dangerous as you make it. What do you mean? I mean, you don't go where you don't belong. You know? We're trying to ask some families out here, basically, if they feel safe out here in downtown Memphis. Most times. Kind of, sort of. No, I'm just saying I don't go places I got no business being. You don't belong in downtown Memphis? Well, I didn't say that. I'm here, aren't I? Anyone should be fine right here, yeah? That would be my expectation. Statistically, apparently not the case. Yeah, I mean, around certain areas, like, we, we try to avoid, I guess, downtown. Oh, this place is a shit. Oh, what are your thoughts? 
Uh, I'm carrying a gun, so if that does anything. Worry. This kind of fear mongering stuff, it's no good for people. Oh, it's man. statistical. Fear mongering. Oh, hell no. Fear mongering. But he's on camera. And you, one thing about white liberals is that you don't know that that's how he really feels. He might be like, these fucking sun turds are the fucking scourge of the planet. But he can't say that. Or at least he thinks he can. not You have no idea what's in this guy's heart. Ask him where his kids go to school. Do his yeah. kids go to school with black kids? He gonna hold the line on camera for all the rest <laughs> of the uh, white liberals. Ask him, does his kids go to school with black kids? Great stuff. It's no good for people. What if it's statistically corroborated, though? Really bullshit. What do you mean? I'm yeah. talking about statistics. It's my first time visiting Memphis. Information from a buddy of mine kind of said, hey, stay here, don't stay here, kind of thing. You strapped right now? Uh, it's in the car. You did say to come strapped. <laughs> yeah, that's an important detail. Honest answer. Do you feel safe here? Memphis? It's okay. It's okay. Are you, do you guys feel safe in Memphis? No. <laughs> no? Are you just going to go downtown tonight? I'm not tonight. I try to avoid sundown. It depends on where you go. Oh, shit. <laughs> sundown, too. Oh, shit. Sundown, too. That's how bad these sun turds has made it, man. These people can't go out past sundown. It's tragic. Yeah, they don't even live in the, in the sun part. Suns are kind of like werewolves. Like when the the moon comes out, they just fucking just turn the place into Haiti overnight. Daytime. Well, yeah, man. It's like a Michael Jackson thriller video, man. Regular people yeah. got to go in the house. <laughs> Imagine being downtown and it's all them niggas. Yeah. <laughs> downtown is just it's supposed to be the spot. It, historically, it was though, because I remember DC downtown. It's not like it is now. Um, for, well, I would say even before 2020, it started going bad. But definitely since 2020, it's like literally fucking a neighborhood. It's like a hood and shit. They've turned downtown into a hood. Downtown today? I'm not tonight. I try to avoid sundown. It depends on where you go. Okay. Right. Downtown? Yeah, it's pretty safe working yeah. downtown. Yeah. What about right here? Yeah, it's pretty safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Statistics are bullshit. There's lies, damn lies, and statistics, brother. We could get easy with, with all the fear mongering. How is that fear mongering? It's very simple. You're asking me about murders, and if I feel safe yeah, here, you I'm say you feel safe. safe. I do. I told you I absolutely. Yeah, but then I walked away, and you said to me, the same the as you make it. The safe or as dangerous sure. as you make it. Enjoy your trip. Thank you. Stay safe. Well, that makes no damn sense. That's a good point. Who do these statistics? He he's he his wife's probably a super liberal too. Like a lot of times, like my wife tried to bully me into all that shit too. She mad as hell that like I'm like literally the opposite of what she thinks. And I never agree with her on anything. Yeah. <laughs> women women are like that, man. Women are more emotional and shit. That's why they like they like to be uh told shit. That's why black women love Democrats. They like oh. when white men tell them shit like, you know, you're oppressed and stuff like that. That's Bro. all women. Well, yeah, they like it when people crime. peak crime denialism, bro. Yeah, yeah, they they like it women more than men, but men too. They like it when people tell them shit and, and stories about how they're gonna make shit better, and they don't even look at the policies. But you know, men fall it's for that shit effect. too. Yeah. Are everyday people seeing these crimes happen around them? Besides hearing from the news and social media, have you ever seen anything? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I did see someone get shot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, Pretty it's very safe. Yeah, very safe. There's mad creeps out here. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of fucked up shit going on, but it's what you make of like everything in life. It's mad show here. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, man. There, ah, there's a lot of friction associated with the discussion of this may, in fact, be the most violent city in America right now, statistically. Violent city? It's the aggravated Absolutely assault capital. I, I, I can honestly tell you, Memphis. Poor cap. Yeah, and here's the thing, too. If you live in a white neighborhood and your kids go to a white private school and you work, and you go to your job and you go to your car and you drive home and during that you never get carjacked, you're not one of the people that gets carjacked, and you just live a white life. Like he goes to like a beer festival. Like they have a lot of shit in Memphis. They have barbecue. They have 
a lot of stuff. Remember, I showed you guys uh, all of the cool stuff they have in Memphis. If you go to the white events and the stuff for white people, yeah, it's a safe city. It's just like D.C. If you go down to the Smithsonian, you hang out at the, you know what I'm saying, or you go to the beer festival or whatever, and then you go home to your white segregated neighborhood. Yeah, it's like everywhere. Yeah, you, you could live amongst this. And then also, if you're told to turn off your unconscious bias, so every little like thing that's pinging in his head, like safety, 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 all his natural instincts, he's been trained to think of those as being racist. So of course he's not going to talk about those when the camera in his fucking face. Capita. Nah. Oh, yo. Quest for. Yeah, this is a sick car. Do you get spooked driving this and be like, damn, I hope someone doesn't hit the car? No, I don't get spooked in that thing. Really? No. Uh, white people, white people live their life like, I hope something don't happen. Like, I, I live my life like I wish something happened. And white people live a life of fear scary. and then... You're scared. The first thing you mm-hmm. asked me was a scary question. You think that's a white, black specific thing? Yeah. Yeah. Why is that? Because you came out here in the interview asking about crime. Well, that's kind of the topic of the, the concept here. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying, though. Like, like, like... But uh, do you think that's really a white, black specific? Uh, I think that's probably not true right no i think it's totally true because you can walk down there's police everywhere you can walk down bill street you can do anything and everything. okay so yeah do you think memphis is more or less dangerous than other cities you've been to in the u.s it, it depends if you believe everything you read doesn't it so i, I don't believe in absolutes if that, if that makes sense because um the- black dude said i wish somebody would wish a nigga would there are wonderful people in every every sort of community but you know the reality this is this is clearly a a city that has some challenges um, no i think i think when white people feel like black people around is gonna be dangerous you know what i'm saying this is true if you were, it was in austin texas you want to ask that question uh, you so he basically uh, erases not quite man. austin texas is very dangerous because of black people the crime rates were the same here. You know what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is like it's this dangerous white city. Like, um, oh, for yeah, sure. yeah, like, uh, like, what you like, like what? What, what, what trailer you park? <laughs> I never <laughs> hear this. Or, Every time I ask this question, I never hear it answered. Where yeah. is the white Chicago? Where's the white Philly? Where's the white Atlanta? Where's the white Memphis? Where is it? This guy's just basically saying retarded shit. That's just coming to mind right now. Like he's not even thinking. He's just like Austin, Texas must be white because Texas. This Bro, is the black. That's what they all do. Yeah. They just say, "Oh, white yeah. people do." It's it's bad white places, but they never yeah. have to actually uh, the, tell you yeah. what. Say. What's funny yeah. is there's actually are really poor white areas, but they're not like this. Poor, it's poor, but it's not violent. Like yeah, that's... it's not violent, and it's drug ridden too. It's poor, and they got drugs, and it's like. But the violence is like this. That's just a black uh, person defense mechanism, man. As soon as a black person feel like some sort of uncomfortable yeah. about, you know, they got a point to to race. We're the same here. You know what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is like it's this dangerous white city. Like, um, oh, for yeah, sure. yeah, like um, I think that's yeah, interesting. I correlated like every part, every. Well, I basically said every city. This has dude a problem, yeah, says has yeah a for sure. Crime and everything and shooting and everything. But like other city has problems with drug problems and everything. It seems like we're all limited to our observations and experiences on how we view these places. Absolutely. Well, we've all seen the statistics. I wanted to explore the heart of Memphis myself and see what was going on for reals. All right, we are in South Memphis. We've entered the hood. Look at that. He's dusting out. He's tweaking out. On top of violence, Memphis also ranks number one when it comes to car-related fatalities. Memphis sits at the top of a not-so-illustrious list. Most dangerous city in America for drivers. One out of every five deadly crashes in Memphis is caused by speeding. No other city even come close to that statistic. That's also black people, man. You're putting black people... This is a city 65% black. That's insane, man. I wonder how many hit and runs they have a year where the person just takes off, kills somebody and takes off. 
There are some shitty drivers out here, I gotta say. We've seen a uniquely disproportionate amount of effed up vehicles on the side of the road relative to the amount of cars. And right across the street, I spotted a car that had just crashed. And close by, there were three shystied up kids who looked like they should be in school right now. What happened? Hit the pole. They hit the pole. They, they, the pole. they, missed they just the hit the pole? So they literally just hit the pole. Yeah. So this is something you guys see on a daily basis or what? Yeah, babe. Do we need to check up on the person in there? Hold on. Oh, there's nobody in there. Okay. Okay, so I've noticed also everyone in Memphis is a terrible driver. I gotta put that out there. All right, so you guys right outside the gas station, shystied up. What are you guys up to right now? I'm not a fed. Doing homework. What do you mean? I can't tell you that. You, you got a wire on. <laughs> I've heard a lot of the youth are up to no good out here. Is that true? No, sir. <laughs> Most of them. Like, it's some yeah. ass niggas behind Savage Stop session. Yeah? What do you mean? <laughs> they think that's a pose, bro. Are you guys strapped? Can't let you know that. Is it pretty common for guys your age to be strapped? How about that? Let me yeah. take that question, yeah? yeah we can yeah. blur all the faces. We can blur your eyes even. How about that? All right, send them or send them. Yeah. You guys are strapped? Yeah. Legit. Yeah. You guys actually have a piece on here. How old are you? I'm 13. 13? I'm 14. 14. Okay. Man, you guys are strapped. That's crazy. I don't know if I believe you guys are strapped, but I'm just going to decide to believe you. Woo! Okay. Wow. Okay. That is crazy. All right. That's all I need to see. We don't need to see anymore. Have you guys had friends die out here? Yeah, yeah. I did. Plenty of folks. Yeah. Well, I could think I shot him in the chest, but they really think I shot him. So. They think you killed your cousin. Yeah. What's the craziest thing you've seen out here? Somebody got shot in front of me. Somebody got shot in front of me? Yeah, that's funny. Funny? How he died. This day another interview. Thanks for your time, man. Be safe, all right? With prepubescent 13 year old squeakers rolling. I shot in front of me. Somebody got shot in front of you? Yeah. What's the craziest thing you've seen out here? Somebody got shot in front of me. Somebody got shot in front of you? Yeah, that's funny. Funny? How he died. So, like, the, the, the question for this guy is who are you going to believe? The hoodlums you just located with your own eyes or the black dude in the car, in the red car? <laughs> you know? Yo, it's crazy how normal this shit is, bro. If you just go around to all these different hoods, it's just all these young sons walking around with masks on and all black. Like, that shit is fucking wild. Yeah, they learned that from the Irish. They just roam around. <laughs> they, just roam, they just roam the streets with masks on, with hoodies on, wearing all black. And it's just. You said random. that from the Irish? They learned that from the Irish. It's funny how yeah, yeah, clearly profiling, profiling, all the profiling they talk about. These kids haven't mentioned none of that to this guy. Yeah, man, we get profile, man. Please stop us all the time. I haven't mentioned nothing about any of that. All they talking about is that guy gun. They about to do something when people die. It's funny. They're not talking about any scorpion unit or any of that bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have complete freedom to do whatever the fuck they want. Exactly. Exactly. They just need jobs, man. This day and not interview. Hey, thanks for your time, man. Be safe, all right? With prepubescent 13 year old squeakers rolling around with shysties and guns outside of a gas station during school hours. It's no surprise violence is so frequent out here. Also, apparently I spend over $400 a month on energy drinks at gas stations. I only know this because the sponsor of this video, Rocket Money, that keeps track of how I spend my money. But what's really cool about Rocket Money is that a couple months ago, I found out I was paying $99 a year for Instacart, $50 a month for a broken home security system, $10 a month for a DoorDash subscription, and subscribe to a Netflix and Hulu account I don't even use anymore. I signed up for Rocket Money, linked my bank account in two seconds, tapped recurring payments to see what unwanted subscriptions I had, and after a few taps, they were all canceled. And on top of them canceling my unused subscriptions for me, I found out using their app, I was spending all the money that I was saving on energy drinks. So I used Rocket Money's budget feature to set a $250 a month budget on my caffeine addiction and I get a notification whenever I go over that amount. If you want to save more and spend less and join the over 5 million members using Rocket Money today, go to rocketmoney.com slash Tyler Oliveira or click the link in the description to get started today for free.
All right, back to Memphis. Well, well yeah, it's like yeah. Okay. One carry, two guns. Baby. Hell yeah! <laughs> Where can you get rid of all the dumbasses? Better it'll be. There, you heard it. A lot of killing. People getting killed every day. Can't walk out the door. Is it amongst the younger or older generation you've seen this? Bring it. I do not feel safe. I feel that. That so sounds like a white racist talking point. Horses is against us, and so are the criminals. We're not allowed to park here. We get ticketed. If we park across the street, our, our windows get bashed in. We used to love Memphis, but I don't go out at night anymore. Uh, we can't protect ourselves because it's just uh, there's a narrative there that I'd rather not say. Racial tension involved racial, in the enforcement of law. Narrative because yeah. the kids are they're out running wild, trying to find guns, and their solution to everything is shooting people. When did you notice that shift in conflict resolution or lack thereof? It was definitely during COVID and Black Lives Matter came in. It was a narrative of racism. All, all white people are racist. And, you know, that's not true. Have you been called a racist out here? Four times no. in one month. What does the future of Memphis look like? To be honest, I'm not sure. I mean, I So these apes and these, these damn mongrel black people that are running around raping and killing everything are have enough time to call this guy <laughs> racist. It's insane, man. Bro, no ex old black people about crime, bro. They just gonna fucking lie and say it was so peaceful back then. Like yeah, man. things have changed, man. We wasn't like this. No, nah, we we've debunked that. Yeah, it, it is definitely. Don't y'all feel like black kids have gotten dumber the past like five years or so? No, seriously, like getting locked in cell phone stores, all kinds of crazy stuff. <laughs> Who the hell gets locked in is trying to rob a cell phone store and fuck around and get locked in the store? That's dumb behavior. Dumb behavior. I don't know if black folks have gotten dumber. I don't know, but I, I just. No, nah, I'm talking about I, these kids, like the young kids, man. They've gotten you know more what I mean? bold and brazen. So, so, so that might you, be what you think. You say bold and brazen, I say dumber. We just now had social media and the access to see all this shit, bro. Exactly. Uh, true. That's true. It has been. It has always been like this. It was always like this as far as I know, man. Um, Memphis, Tennessee police have killed 10 suspects so far this year a number that seems excessive to many when compared to only two deaths by police in all of 1969. Officers have been cleared by grand juries in all of the 10 shootings. The most controversial took place at Jean's Liquor Store in the black community. Officers stopped to ask a vendor to move his stand off the business property. Store owner Eugene Mickey came out to protest, explaining the man had his permission to work there. The officers insisted on evicting the vendor. Mickey went back inside, witnesses say, to call a friend on the force for clarification. The two policemen followed Mickey into a storage room. One was heard to say, don't do that. Then, say witnesses, they started shooting. A store employee says eight or ten shots were fired and that he saw the guns pointing downward as though the victim might have been on the floor. Officers say Mickey pointed a shotgun at them and they fired in self-defense. Other shootings varied. Some suspects were armed, others were not. A police stakeout at another liquor store killed two blacks in an attempted robbery. One was armed. He was killed instantly with a shotgun. The other, unarmed, tried to run, but was wounded near the door. He attempted to crawl out of the store and was shot again by the officer. Police have also been injured in these encounters. A suspect grabbed an officer's gun, ran to the rear of this house, and in a shootout, three policemen were injured. One remained in critical condition for several days. Of the 10 deaths, eight were black. This figure, plus constant charges of police brutality in the black community, brought an investigation of the department by an ad hoc committee set up by the Memphis NAACP. So this is back when um, the blacks were raised right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this sounds this sounds no different. This sounds like some shit we would read like yesterday. <laughs> Ten out of eight black people got shot, and now they're doing a damn investigation. Cooperation came from the U.S. Justice Department, area legislative, judicial, and enforcement agencies. Only the Memphis Police Department refused to take part. 
and says Director Frank Holloman they'll refuse in the future. He says a citizens committee has no business interfering in police affairs. I feel that if the responsibility uh, and the duties are given to the, uh, to the police executives throughout the country, then those executives must, must have uh, the power in order to uh, carry out those responsibilities. And I do not think that a civilian review board of people who do not understand and who are not in a position uh, to, uh, to handle the problem uh, uh, can uh, help it. I, I, I do not see the reason why we should have a civilian re review board when we have so many review boards at the present time. And in each one of these cases in which you refer to as those individuals who have been shot uh, in Memphis, every one of those have been considered by the uh, Shelby County Grand Jury, uh, which have been given all of the facts and they have exonerated the police officers. And these are citizens of the community black and white, who are sitting on the grand jury and who have been given all of the facts. In addition to that, we have the FBI, which investigates most of these cases where a complaint is made. We have the Department of Justice, the Civil Rights uh, Division of the De uh, D Department of Justice, attorneys who also look at it. We have the federal grand juries. We have civil courts. So I feel that with all of that, together with the electorate, who can vote in or out any administration or any group, I think that that is sufficient. I think that is a democratic, uh, proper, uh, official way to, uh, to handle the problem. Yeah, man. Um. <laughs> yeah, nothing will be enough, man. All these grand juries and different review boards, it's all the same. Nothing's going to change. The behavior is still the same even after 55 years. Yeah, man, this is back when black people were raised right near God in their homes. And jeez, man, um, no internet, no, no um, social media. Let's see what this white guy's got to say, man. It's so good to you, baby. Hang out. Get it. Children have grown up seeing their fathers, mothers badly treated. The, uh, the youngsters themselves in their teenage years have experienced uh, a certain brutalizing experience, either physical brutality or uh, psychic uh, brutality that's caused a, an enormous credibility gap between the police and this community. So the, the pastor, the local pastor says police brutality, man. Gap between the police and this community. It is interesting to note that last year the sheriff's department of this county made 16,000, I won't sign it, 49 people. I think they uh, uh, are objective. I think they're fair. I think that they really believe that they have a responsibility for the safety and welfare of all the citizens, white and black. And I think they're dedicated professional men. The director says Memphis citizens must accept police protection on the terms of those in power. And if the terms are not acceptable, the only recourse is through the electoral process. He says his policies will not be changed by citizen recommendations. Del Vaughn, CBS News, Memphis. Well, I think it, it, it's, it is some encouragement to the people who live in poverty to see these women come because it's an indication that they care, particularly on the day of this kind. And I think the good that will come will be the action. If they go back to that plush home and do nothing, then our efforts today have been in vain. Oh, man. Because of course he was your source of income. Are you on welfare? Does no. Lester not have a, a, a lunch? Is it, are they not on No, no, this meeting. No. $5. Do you understand anymore now? 
I'm learning. I'm learning. Yes, I think you have to understand when you look around and hear the sights and sounds of the ghetto that if I think about my own home and I wish for these people a little bit more of what I had. Oh, they fucking trash. It, of course, remains to be seen whether or not these 75 women were moved enough today to converge on Memphis City Hall next week. But at the very least, there was some evidence of a renewed dialogue here today. <sighs> Man, um... <laughs> Shit never changes, bro. Yeah, they, they've been chipping away at gliders for decades at this point, just decade after decade after decade. Like, it all makes sense. You just you just look at it from point A to B to C to D. Like, it all makes yeah. sense. Yeah, man. That, they've been running this psychological, like, guilt trip on y'all for yeah. decades, bro. Them gliders don't never, in those old videos, they never appear as, like, mean and... You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like black people always try to like yeah. um, portray gliders in the old days. As we rarely see, like, ah, fuck they do and we, we rarely ever see that because they wouldn't have had to hide that in the '60s and the '70s. Yeah, you was because it's not so, true. Really? Like, it was black people are the mean ones. It's always been that way. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like they're the even, mean even, ones now. Even, even, even during like you have to think about it, like. There's no reason for gliders to want to, to even interact with sons in the first place, right? Like there, there's just no reason to. There's you no don't reason get for anything. you get nothing out of. It. Yeah, and there's no reason for them to be like thinking with all this like negative energy towards sons all day. Like it just makes no sense, right? Yeah, well, you could just not give a fuck, right? And just let them kill each other and be poor by themselves. Yeah, black people don't bring anything to the white table, to the table for white people. They, they only lose things. Uh, no, I mean, serious. White people only um, lose things by being around sons. They would tell you we was kings and all that, man, and we was kings and, and white people want to take over our uh, our domain, man. They have right? to take care of us, too. You know what I mean? Like, one thing about... Whenever we share spaces with gliders, they literally like end up having to take care of us. Yeah, it's like it's the white black dynamic is is very much like a parasite host type of dynamic. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's it's why they really think. Good. That's why they think black people are too stupid to get voter IDs and internet. And but they don't like actually that. think that. They don't actually think that. You know that. Come on. That's what they say. They say black people are too stupid to get voter ID, well, so we, gotta, the college we can't pass, pass that, that law. The average white person doesn't think that. Those, those college kids, <laughs> they, they, they think yeah. that's stupid shit. Yeah, yeah. As, long, as long as niggas are able to suck resources out of y'all, then this shit's going to keep going, bro. Yeah, man. Um, 